hello guys and welcome back to my youtube channel no yeah here how you all doing i'm so excited to bring another video um we're going to be filming some of my videos from the car this time i don't want to spend so much energy editing sounds you know from the video and that's why i chose a very comfortable quiet place where i can have a very um, good communication with you all i'm sure you do not mind that so today's video is a very interesting video it's about seven things i wish i knew before i relocated to the uk and by the way if you're new to my channel i'd like to say a very big welcome just take some time to hit on that subscribe button please do not watch this video and not hit the subscribe button please thank you make sure you hit the like button as well so that other people can get to watch this content you know it might help somebody you never can tell so welcome to my youtube channel so the first thing i wish i knew was that i wish i knew that it was going to be very hard at first the truth is that it will be very hard at first and i'd like you to know that now get it it's going to be hard at first but it's going to get better it's going to ease up ease out later it's going to face a lot when you're moving or if you're just moving you don't just start having this feeling of oh, oh so we're here now why is it like this why is everything just looking like that going to the grocery shop going on the bus you know getting off the bus getting going to work calling in sick for, for work getting your children into school your children can't find a school everything just is like ah, what's all this now when we're in Nigeria, it wasn't like this for example i was going to board the bus one time and i was literally at the bus stop and the bus moved i was like ah uh, where i'm coming from the conductor we have to shadow the driver wait wait somebody needs to get on this bus you know that kind of thing in my country where i'm coming from you know so that for me was like what's all this we even want to enter a bus and pace there somebody is going you know so all of that and then i had to wait for another bus for another 10 to 15 minutes waiting for another bus checking my time making sure i did not get late to work so these are some of the things that happen and you know and then you're wondering what is or what is why is this whole thing staring me hard in the face it's going to be hard at first maybe finding school for your child or you think yeah, your child is supposed to be in a particular class but here there's a structured system that says what class your child should be in your child is 10 years old and you think oh when she was 10 years old she was already in um jesse's one in nigeria that's like year seven here and they tell you no 10 years is year five and you're saying why you know all of that just hits you in the face because that's how the system is structured and organized so, at first, it may look like I don't get it, but then I'm, it's going to face a lot. So those were some of the things that hit me when I first came in. And now I'm beginning to understand that, okay, it's going to be a hard at first. But after a while, it's going to get easy. For me, in the first three months, I wasn't even happy. Like, what's all this? After a while, I just sit down and be gazing into, into space. Like, ah, what's all this? You know, at some point, I wasn't even happy. But as time went by... It got a lot better so that's the first thing is going to appear hard at first then the second thing is that the work culture here is different <sighs> if you're working in this country you're actually working when i was back in nigeria i could work on my phone you know i could quickly check something on my phone make a quick call and all of that but here i do not work on my phone my phone is kept locked somewhere while i work you know so it means that i can't make um certain calls i cannot um, have connection but except if the call is absolutely absolutely very important then you can take excuses from your managers and quickly make a call because it's very important at that point and then you keep back your phone so work ethic is different if you're working here you are working mm -hmm. if you are not working you, if you clock in you time in you're working to get out or to you go for break you are working so work ethics here is very different right for example, if you're not where you know what to come to work in a you can just um, put a call across to your boss and then that's it. At the end of the month, you get your salary. But like I explained later here, if you lose one day, you call in sick one day, they take one day salary off of you. So you know what is going off your pocket <laughs> if they take one day salary. So you're just going to be well, 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 except if you're truly, truly not well or maybe if your child is indeed not well. But you have to consider it very well back home some people have weddings on a saturday and they want to travel on that friday they just call in and tell one cock and boo story about why they cannot come to work and okay the manager just understands it and they don't come to work and then at the end of the month they just collect their salaries but here if you lose that one day you have lost money for a day so imagine somebody who is doing a 15 hour per, per day job for eight hours he's already losing 120 pounds i'm sure you don't want to lose that kind of money you know imagine if you send money back home and you convert 120 pounds you know how much you're going to be losing if you want to send money back home so i hope that makes sense so work ethics here is totally and completely different there is really no um boss kind of relationship like i see back home everyone is respectful of others you hardly see 
how the bus you hardly see the bus top down on the, the subordinates and all of that you come into some organizations you don't even know where the bus is you don't even know your guys everybody's just like the same when you're just getting on the job you may even see somebody cleaning up a place you don't even know that oh this one is just tidying up this place at this particular time is even the bus you know sometimes it's like that so what ethics here is totally and completely different i wish i had the knowledge of that before coming well it helped me a lot because at first when i came in I had some issues, you know, but as time went by, I understood clearly and it was a lot easier for me. So that second one, third thing I wish I knew and I wish I understood was that no African time. Actually, there's no African time regardless. That's why I said that if you get to your bus stop and the bus is already leaving, sometimes the bus would leave. I'm not African time. Bus don't, buses don't stay at the bus stop and wait for people to come in, right? So if you get there, the number of people they find... These are the number of people the bus um, drivers are going to pick up and then they're going to just keep moving to the next bus stop. It's not like how it is here in uh, my country, in Nigeria, where you can, the buses are chilling and waiting for you to come in and then if it doesn't get filled up, they're not going to leave the stop or the bus stop. Another thing I have realized about African time is that one time my daughter had, for example, one time my daughter had a presentation at 4.30. My husband and I got there at 4.35 and the door was locked. 4.35. I I panicked at first, like ha, ah, we are early, four thirty five, you know. So, but I remember when we just you know tried to go in, somebody now opened the door nicely and did us. Program started like more like program has started, and when we walked into the hall, everyone was seated at four thirty five. I just sat down nicely and that was the last time I ever attended anything late. So if I need to come in at 4.30, I'm there at 4.20. Now we just sit down, 4.25, 4.30, I'm there. So that, because at 4.30, they are going to start regardless of who is there or who is not there. Or they may give five minutes grace depending on what the situation is. Well, I attended a conference not too long ago and we're supposed to start a session, I think about 8 a.m. And I got in... At maybe eight o two, the session had started because it was supposed to start at eight. I got in at eight o two from my hotel room into the conference hall. It had started, and I'm like, ah, I'm looking at the time, and I told my friend, well, "Tomorrow, I'm getting here fifteen minutes before." I know all these things are happening to me; they are kind of embarrassing, but I feel ah, eight o two is still okay. It has started. It has started. They didn't catch us for late coming, but it has started. Everyone was already seated. <sighs> So that's another thing that I have found out that there's no African time. If you come in late, you're going to be doing yourself a disfavor if you come in late. Another thing I've learned is about the another thing I wish I knew is about this weather. Honestly, I didn't realize this, this weather was going to be like this. Of course, because I'm not experienced now, that's don't get it wrong. I know about it from information, but of course, not from experience. There are people who have experienced this weather before they finally relocated. In other words, they visited the United Kingdom at some point. Some of them have schooled here, so they understood the weather. So when they were coming or when they were relocating, finally they understood it clearly. For me, it's different. I'm in a country, I came from a country where it's been summer all year and where it is summer all year. And then I came into a country where it's not summer all year. So that's a lot different. There are four seasons, which we do not experience back home. We don't experience four seasons. We rather do rain and then it is dry. It's not in it is dry that's what we know all year so but here there are times when it's even raining back home and it's just normal but here the four seasons and i see a lot of difference in the trees and the atmosphere the wind the rain the cold the sun and everything four different seasons for somebody who is a full grown adult you know that's a lot for me and I needed to start planning my time, planning how I do things just so that I could fit in the correct kind of clothes that I should wear, the ones that I shouldn't wear. But it's getting a lot better. Like I said, it was going to be hard at first, but now it's a lot better and I understand it more now. So I wish <laughs> I wish I knew that before. And that thing is that relationship and communication is going to change. I won't stress on this one. This is personal to me. And you know, there's some people who say, oh, now that she's relocated really abroad, now why? She knows you call her, she knows you text us again. She doesn't even answer to our groups. I explained earlier, it's not like before where I'd have access to my phone. Now, if I'm working eight hours, I'm not on my phone. My phone is on its own. And by the time I close from work, as I'm going back home, it's that same phone that I'm going to use to communicate that I'm going to use to be on map on the Google Map. 
to check the time the bus is coming or maybe if it's a station where i have to go by train i have to check the time check the, it's that same phone that i'm using i don't have two phones so i'm on need even when i'm in my seat i'm trying to see the people that are that are very closest to me that i have to call first of all you know there are some groups that i do not even have time to start you know chatting my channel is there i have to want to check if there's a comment sometimes i don't even do it there was a time i came in here and for four whole months i abandoned my youtube channel it was that bad i left that space because i just needed to wrap my head around what was going on around me so relationship and communication changes a lot you have to now start streamlining and calling people who are very closest to you you know so in the morning when I'm going to work, that's when I'm calling my mama. Um, that's what we were speaking of. She understands that perfectly. And I'm so glad she understands that. And every time she says, I really understand this. And in the morning we're talking and then I want to get on the bus. I tell her to hold on. I want to get on the bus. Blah, blah, blah. I tell her, sometimes I tell her, I didn't find a seat on the bus. I need to stand. So speaking is not as comfortable as I should speak. Because the whole bus sometimes is quiet. And then you're trying to also speak quietly because... Of, you know, all these, they are ASB and the social behavior. You're not screaming and shouting. Somebody's being disgusted at you talking anyhow or something. But relationship and communication, honestly, would change. It's not going to be like before. You're not working with your phone. Now, the same phone is what you're going to be using to check up on, check your mail, check your map, and you're finding your way home, especially if you've just arrived. Now, this is videos for people who, are just, who have just arrived. It's, it's, apart from those except if you now understand the situation now i'm talking about people who have just arrived and myself as somebody who has just arrived you know at the first six months when i first came in you know it wasn't as easy as um i thought it was going to be so it changed a lot about my communication and relationship i've had people call me and send me messages like ah, and why you know even chat us up and i'm like I can't even, I can chat to you up. Sometimes I don't even check status, you know. I can chat to you up. I can take some time out to, to do that. But you can't call me because I'm at work and I'm not with my phone. Or you're trying to call me. That's when I'm checking my map and checking my phone. There are other things I'm doing online. I'm doing a lot of trainings online. A lot of people here do a lot of trainings online. Sometimes your phone is your backup that you're using and it's, <sighs> something honestly i wish I, I i knew i had deep information about that that if it was going to change this much i would have known what to do and how to go about it another thing i wish i knew is that there's some personal belongings things i brought in that i shouldn't have brought like personal clothing items that i just feel that there were luggages and loads so if you're planning to come please research this one very well ask questions very well there are some clothes that are not okay for the weather that you will not even be able to wear sometimes your body size is even going to change some clothes will not even fit in sometimes it just depends on you this is very personal so please you want to know whether you should bring some clothes or you shouldn't bring you know personal things that you shouldn't buy or you shouldn't bother to bring or they're just doing some of them are just going to occupy space i was looking through my things and i've seen some things i've not used in one year and i was asking myself why did i even stress myself in bringing some of these things before i'd watched videos on youtube where people are like they even bother to bring all those personal stores you're going to find some of them here or you may not even be needing them because of the situation sometimes your work situations you know the type of job that you're going to come and do may not permit certain clothing you know what i mean some people come in and then then the nature they job required them to use uniforms for example and so the bulk of the time they're in those uniforms so they really do not need some of these clothing items that they've brought in from their home country so you want to think it through you want to watch videos of other people that learn from their experiences or ask them a couple of questions and you understand what it is like understand what the situation is like in the places where you're moving to and you know whether you want to bring in some clothing items or you just want to spend more time and more energy focusing on the things that you are very necessary for you to come into the country with another one is that there's this thing about missing home the seventh one is that you're going to miss home yeah yeah for me i miss that part of home you know i know my immediate family is here um some of my, my husband's family too they are here but i know of that feeling of missing you know the church the people the places the community i live in a place in nigeria where you would have heard somebody's where ah what is happening there bah, bah, bah. people come out what is happening yeah hey, you know all of that i missed it i miss going on the bus i miss all the gist of the bus the gist of things that didn't consign you on the bus man i so miss those ones honestly i didn't know i was going to miss all of those there are times i'm peeping through the window and everywhere is empty like 
where is everyone why are things like this where is everyone going to especially during winter where i'm looking out and then at 3 p.m it is dark like you know day 3 3 30 4 p.m the weather is changed everywhere is quiet especially during winter at 3 30 4 p.m everywhere is dark everywhere is quiet you're going to the store at 4 p.m and it looks like it's 8 p.m my kids are coming back from school and they are wondering why we come back from school at night you know they're going to school and they're wondering why are we going to school at night you know the whole thing is so different i'm going out to for work and it feels like i'm going out in the jack i'm coming back and i'm coming back in the dark you know so there's that thing about home that you're going to miss but it's fine but try as much as you can to contact as many as people as you can don't make excuses that your life's different for you now but i know relationship and communication is going to change but try as much as you can to contact people family back home like i have tried my best to do that as well contact as many people that i i can explain to as many that i can't communication and relationship is honestly is really going to change but i'm going to try and i'm really really trying i can see that that's why i call as many people that i can call you know so the same thing about missing home <sighs> you're going to miss so so these are some of the things that i wish uh, I, I knew before coming here but that's it if you've watched this video up until this time and you're still hearing my voice and seeing my face i am super excited that you're doing that thank you so much do not leave this channel without subscribing and do not forget to hit the like button that hitting that like button is going to help my channel a whole lot please hit the subscribe button hit the like button thank you for watching this video i'll see you in another video stay blessed bye for now